Documentation practices are simple instructions for managing data during the documentation lifecycle following GXP requirements. Records need to be legible, traceable and reproducible during the retention period. To make robust decisions in a GXP environment, the supporting records must be reliable and complete. This short course will reveal some best practices for keeping manual records in a compliant manner. The next course will cover good documentation practices GDOCP, for electronic records. For the time being, you will learn about the latest application of GDOCP and gain a clear picture of planning, evaluating, approving, issuing, documenting, preserving and archiving records. You will learn to implement GDOCP in paper-based systems with different real-world examples and ultimately understand how to reconstruct these records to ensure the traceability of GXP activities. Good documentation practices GDOCP, are also known as good record keeping practices GRK. These terms can be used interchangeably. We previously discussed the meaning of GDOCP. GDOCP is a set of best practices for documentation and record keeping in regulated industries with GXP processes that ensure data reliability, data integrity and acceptability of documents and records. Keep in mind that all the above aspects share a common goal. The objective is to apply adequate control strategies to ensure robust and seamless data management systems that guarantee material or product identity, quality, purity, strength and safety before the material or product is delivered to the customer or patient. Admittedly, this is a long definition, but it is critical that you understand it. The implementation of GDOCP should be founded on a risk-based approach to records and data management that will ensure adequate control strategies are in place to guarantee the GXP data integrity. Once you identify the risk, you must complete risk mitigation with regard to record and data integrity tasks. First, documents should be simple, reliable and accurate in order to prevent misinterpretation. They should be clear and legible for the intended use. Regarding the layout, we recommend using a predefined template to keep all document types uniform. Documents should have clear, unambiguous contents. For example, I recommend the following template for an SOP. Title, document and version numbers, date of approval, date of effectiveness, review period if applicable, purpose, scope, responsibilities, procedure, materials and equipment as appropriate, related documents, definitions, revision history. For other types of documents, for example, work instructions, protocols, forms, etc., different contents can be used depending on the intended use. All documents should have a unique identification number as well as a version number to avoid duplication. Pages in the master document should be numbered in XOY format, for example, page 3 of 25, to easily detect whether any pages are lost or misplaced. Similarly, each document should have the signature and date of the individual or individuals who prepared, reviewed and approved it. Refrain from using controlled documents all the time. A reminder that the use of uncontrolled documents and temporary recording, for instance, via scraps of paper, is unacceptable. Instead, original data should be recorded directly in official records, for example, on approved analytical worksheets at the time of the GXP activity. Finally, if a working document is reproduced, for instance, via photocopying from a master document, you must ensure no errors are included and that any applicable corrections are signed and documented. 
To achieve this, the copy should be identified in a logbook, for example, with the name or identity of the person, date, time, and number of copies made. The copy should be clearly differentiated from the original one, for example, by using a copy of original stamp, dated, and initialed. Whenever a change in the quality process is made, all documents in the quality management system should be updated. If there are no changes, the documents should be regularly reviewed and kept up to date according to your organizational policies. For example, an SOP might be reviewed every two years. The reason for this is that organizations are improving their processes over time, which means you need to check the validity of the written procedure. Any changes or revisions to documents should be assessed to determine the impact of the change. Revisions should be handled through a review and approval change management process. When a document is updated, it should be reviewed by someone who performs a task in question, that is, by someone with sufficient knowledge of the task. The signature of the reviewer and the review date will confirm the review has taken place. Once the document is reviewed and approved, you should have a manual system in place to prevent the use of the outdated version. Superseded original documents should be cancelled but retained in a safe place for future reference. Superseded copies must be reconciled and kept apart from current ones. Before using a new document, all authorized users should read the latest version and receive the proper training, if applicable. This should take place before the effective date. When blank forms are required to record data during routine use, the original formats or records associated with the activity should be part of the corresponding SOP. For example, you can include the format as an annex. These forms can be used to issue master copies of controlled documents. They must be stored in a secure manner and accessible only to authorized individuals, that is, to those who can issue a copy. In manual processes, the master copies of forms can be locked in a secure file cabinet. Regarding the use of supporting documents, these can be included as attachments. Supporting documents should be paginated with a reference to the parent document. Copies of blank forms should be logged in specific control data sheets, for example, issuance logbooks, for future reference and traceability. The person who issues the document should record the date, their initials, the document name, etc. at the time it is issued in the issuance logbook. You don't have to include the exact time, but you're certainly welcome to do so. The same control measures are required to issue bound and paginated notebooks with sequentially numbered pages. All notebooks, data sheets, and worksheets should be traceable. Any document printed or photocopied for review or reference purposes must have suitable watermarks or stamps with file or document names such as copy of original to ensure adequate control over the document. The document should be signed and dated by the person who printed or photocopied it. You must take special care to distribute copies of a document across an organization. This means you will need to apply an appropriate system and procedure. For example, the Quality Assurance Department is usually responsible for the issuance and distribution of controlled copies. When documents such as worksheets, paper forms, logbooks, blank form, etc. are used during routine tasks, the manual recording of the data should take place in an indelible manner. The recorded data should be clear, concise, accurate and legible. Data entries should be recorded promptly at the time the actions are performed in a contemporaneous manner. To record data, I recommend using an indelible ballpoint pen. The use of a pencil is not allowed. Erasable or water-soluble ink pens are not permitted either. 
they should not be used to complete the GXP document in any way. If data has been erroneously recorded, for example due to a typing error, you can correct the entry using a single strikeout line to indicate the error such that the original information remains legible. The correct entry should be written near the strikeout entry. All corrections to the original entries should be initialed and dated with an explanation included, especially in cases where the reason for the change is not obvious. For clarity, you can predefine correction codes. For example, TE, standing for transcription error, WD, wrong date, TYE, typographical error, CE, calculation error, etc. If necessary, a detailed justification for the correction can be provided for further clarity. All corrections of manual entries should be made in contemporaneous documentation. The correction must be signed and dated by the person who made the original entry. The alteration should maintain the readability of the original information. The use of white correction fluid and sticky notes, post-it notes, to correct the entry of data is not permitted. Backdating and postdating are not allowed either. Entries corresponding to a number should be recorded as they appear in the instrument displays, for example, with all decimals. After calculations are done, the final result should be rounded using significant figures or according to the predefined number of decimal places shown in the specification. For example, if the pH meter display is 7.049 and the specification is 7.0 to 7.5, then the rounded value should be 7.0. If the pH meter display was 7.050, then the final result would be 7.1. You can learn the rounding rules from the European Pharmacopeia or the US Pharmacopeia. All data entry fields should be completed. If there are blank spaces in worksheets, you can report them as NA, not applicable, or you can draw a single line through the portion of the page that is not used. Blank spaces are not allowed. The illustration below indicates that the blank space was not skipped or forgotten while making the entry. Regarding signatures, manual documents rely on handwritten signatures. Each signature must be unique to the individual signing. One best practice is for your organization to keep a list of long and short signatures, initials, traceable to each employee. Auditors usually request this. If you also use a personal seal, a stamp, to sign documents, you must keep the seal in a secure location where only you can access it. Data entry errors can lead to confusion or deviations from the intended use of the document. Some errors might even have a direct impact on product quality. This is why upon completion, original handwritten records should be reviewed and signed by a second person to confirm the completeness, accuracy and compliance of all the entries. Errors should be reported, evaluated and investigated per the organization's deviation procedure. Corrective or preventive actions should be implemented afterward to avoid recurrence. What if the reviewer realizes there are missing documents? If the reviewer determines a document has been lost or that there is no traceability between documents, the event should be handled through a deviation procedure. The incident should be reported to the head of department and to the quality assurance department. An investigation must follow. What if there are torn or damaged pages of documents or records? All portions of the pages that are torn or damaged should be attached to the main document, for example, by using transparent silo tape. I also recommend attaching a true copy or a photocopy of the page signed with a proper justification. Do not discard any torn or damaged papers. It is imperative that you retain all the original portions. What happens if there are spillages? 
If there is a spillage over a document that makes it illegible, then an incident report should be submitted to the head of department and to the quality assurance department. You may have a new copy of the master document reissued, although you will have to retain the old copy attached to the new one and record an explanation. Records should be retained per regulatory requirements and your internal organizational policies. Remember that records must be readable throughout the retention period. When using manual documentation, I recommend keeping an inventory list of all documents within the quality management system for easy archival and retrieval during the records lifecycle. Having a good tracing system in place will prevent headaches during audits or inspections. What about critical records? Critical records, including raw data that are related to stability studies, process and method validation, usually support the marketing authorization dossier. In these cases, the records will need to be retained as long as the authorization is in place. Even if there are no changes to a process, periodic review of GXP documents and forms should take place in accordance with internal policies. Only authorized personnel should be able to review and approve the documents, always using the organization's official change management process. All revised documents should include the revision history and be version controlled. Keep in mind that only the latest version should be used at any point in time. In addition, it is important to ensure all superseded manual versions are recovered from the point of use. Finally, be sure to record the changes in controlled logbooks for optimal traceability. The destruction of GXP documents can only take place by appropriate means. Remember that all original documents must be stored during the established retention period, even if they have been cancelled or superseded. Superseded copies can be discarded or destroyed with the appropriate justification following consultation with quality assurance. For example, a stamp can authorize the cancellation or obsolescence of a document. Draft documents that are usually printed and used for reference should feature a watermark titled draft. They can be destroyed by shredding. However, documents that are under approval or review must be stamped appropriately to indicate they have been submitted for correction. That's all. Thank you for attending this course. I hope you found it useful and that you have learned what you expected. See you in other courses at SciLife Academy to continue your learning journey.